Hey, Dr. Mike here. Do you know your true age? Stay tuned to learn more with our guest, Ryan Smith. You're listening to Live Foreverish, a show dedicated to helping you live just a little longer. Here's your host, Dr. Mike and Dr. Crystal Gosser. All right, welcome to Live Foreverish, uh, Dr. Crystal. Yes, I like this. <laughs> I, okay, so th- this uh, this whole podcast is about what we're calling the true age of somebody, right? Like you got you got your birthday age, mm-hmm. right? You want to share yours? No, I, I know you don't. <laughs> I'm in my 50s already. Jeez. Things are moving quick, chronologically mm, speaking. Mm-hmm. But I do a lot of good stuff. You know, biologically speaking, am I a little younger? That's kind of what we're asking. Yes. Right? And there's a way to kind of test for that. Our guest today is Ryan Smith. He's the former founder of Taylor Made Compounding and current founder of True Diagnostic. Uh, Ryan, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you both. Why? Why should I be interested? I already know how old I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I have birthdays every year. You know, they just keep coming and coming and coming, right? Faster and faster and faster. What? Why do I? What's this idea of biological age? Why do I want to know this? What? What is it going to help me with? Yeah, so I, I, I always like to explain the concept by just asking people to think about people in their own life. Think about people who they know who are 50, who might look 70, and then vice versa, those people who are 70 who look 50. Um, and it really introduces this cop, uh, topic we call phenotypic differentiation, right? The differences we have as we all age. Some people age really, really well. Other people age not so much. Um, and being able to measure that in a way that's much more accurate to our individual body biology is extremely helpful for prediction of death and disease and just prevention mm. of, of negative disease outcomes as it relates to life. The things we do on a daily basis, like uh, being able to stand, stand uh, to, to walk regularly, all of those things are age related. And age is the biggest risk factor for all chronic disease and death. Almost every single disease and yeah, even exactly. death, age is that biggest risk factor and by a wide margin. And so if we can quantify that process, we can really take preventative medicine to our own hands, treat the biggest risk factor for almost every chronic disease. Yes. And we've all seen this in the real world. Like when you look at twins and this idea of kind of nature versus nurture, right? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure yeah. I have that right. Where, you know, they they have everything's the same, but their lifestyle is different, which makes me kind of think about biological age. Maybe they are aging differently and wondering what are those factors? Because obviously it's beyond your genetics is what we're learning, right? It's it's beyond right. what's happening in the DNA. So what are those factors that impact the biological age of a person? Yeah, that's certainly a good question. And, and, and quite frankly, that's one that we've been trying to answer for a long time. And in order to do that, though, we need a tool, we need a tool to measure what that biological aging process is. And, and this has been a search for a long time. Even in the 1920s, people were saying your biological age is your chronological age plus one year for every pack per day you smoke. So really crude measurements. Mm-hmm. But as we've gotten uh, sort of uh, more sophisticated in, in our understanding of, of, of biology and, and the central dogma of biochemistry, we have created methods that are very, very predictive of those outcomes. And uh, the best example are the things that we specialize here at, at True Diagnostic in, which is these DNA methylation-based clocks. And those clocks are a way to measure biological age, but they do it by looking at not what your, your genes are, your gene sequence, but what your gene expression profiles are, what genes are turned on or turned off. And that can be very indicative of how we're aging. Right. And that's what we call epigenetics, right? Yep. Yeah, certainly. Epigenetics are above the genome. These are changes that are happening to our DNA, which are uh, which are not sequence related changes, but expression, the on or off switches of of what our genes are actually doing. And, and the way that I usually like to explain this is every cell in our body has the same DNA, right? If we tested your DNA from your heart or your skin or your liver, we get the exact same DNA sequence. But obviously, those tissues are very different. Your skin is behaving like skin. Your heart is behaving like heart. Um, and so it, the way that it does that is by what genes it turns on and turns off. So these can be incredibly informed to what's happening for us in our body. Yeah. I, and I think we, we need to be a little careful, though, when you just you can't really just look at somebody. Right. Even though maybe they look a little older. That doesn't mean biologically speaking, they're older. And I'll give you an example. My my uncles on the Greek side, I'm Greek and I have several great uncles that lived past 100. 
And I saw pictures of them when they were in their 40s and 50s, and they looked old then. I mean, mm. old. Now, they were in the – they were – did I ever tell you they were no. sheep herders? No. Yeah, I come from a, a That's awesome. family gotcha, of sheep, sheep herders, <laughs> yeah, out in the hills of um, – in Albania and, and into Greece a little bit. So they were out in the sun a lot, and so yeah. I think maybe that had an effect, but they ate good. They ate fresh foods, right? Mm. They dabbled in some wine here and there, right? <laughs> and they there's longevity there. So I don't think it's just – that's why we want to do this. Right. We want to look inside. Am I, am I thinking about this right, Ryan? We want to look inside to determine what right. truly is going on as far as your age. Yeah, certainly. And and uh, I always tell people it's not always intuitive, right? You, you know, some people are always very surprised with the results, both in a good way and sometimes in a bad way. Um, and, and so, uh, but the good news is that we know that these clocks are really effective at capturing your biological age because we know how they're related to health outcomes. So when we look at these really large data sets uh, with people who have taken their DNA you know, 60 years ago, we can actually look at their aging rate then and look at their outcome data. And what we see is that those people who were aging faster biologically than their chronological age are at increased risk for almost every negative disease outcome. And that's really what we're trying to avoid. But to speak more about that is... <laughs> I, I should also mention I, I, one I, I, of those I'm algorithms. Wait, what am I gonna <laughs> no, but, you know, the information, and I think we're maybe jumping ahead, but I think it's inf it's information you want to know because you can do you can influence. something about it, you right? Can influence you can through if, epigenetic ways your, right. your expression, your gene. Right. Okay, well, I can, you uh, can slow it down. It's still a little scary. It, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, the, the, way, the way that I like to oftentimes describe it is, again, age is the biggest risk factor for all chronic disease. And so if you're not diseased yet, if you're really trying to do preventative medicine, take care of yourself before something happens, this is probably the the, the best biomarker to look at um, because it can sort of give you that biggest risk factor and then you can start addressing that biggest risk factor before other diseases start to develop. And so uh, it, it certainly is a preventive medicine tool and, and one we think that uh, everyone should do and, and take in order to get an idea of where they're at and then hopefully uh, institute changes to improve on that aging rate. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was kidding. Of course, prevent, prevent, prevention is the key to everything, right? It's the That's easiest, right. the cheapest way to to go about anything in life right yes and just like you get cholesterol checked just like you get you you weigh yourself you check your sugar levels i mean those are we're doing that even though it may be a little oh i don't really want to see what my blood pressure is today but you mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. uh, because that information it's biofeedback it's telling you something that's important this test is really looking at it at a deeper deeper yeah level it's telling you if everything you're doing is it actually working yeah you know and then what how how would i need to adjust that's kind of what what i'm guesstimating here i know so we're we're looking at dna methylation what are some other things that's being evaluated um with yeah. this test yeah, if, if, if there's one big takeaway, I think for anyone listening, I, I want to just talk about the platform of DNA methylation testing because um, mm. we can get so much data from this. We can predict things that that honestly sound a little bit science fiction. Everything from we can even probably predict where what zip code you're, you're lived in most of your life due to pollution markers within your DNA methylation. We can oh, predict your fitness markers like uh, your, your VO2 max, uh, things that have been very difficult to do in a clinical setting. Um, and we can actually even predict when you're going to die fairly accurately. And so all of these things, uh, um, the information that is stored in your epigenome is robust and immense. And so this will start to be used as a method for detecting cardiovascular risk. It's already being used to detect cancer at stage zero or stage one, really early stages. And so as a biomarker, this can be applied to every area of medicine. But um, but longevity has really driven it. And I think that that's certainly a good thing because, um, again, longevity and, and aging in general is so related to every type of disease development process. And so um, there's a lot of things that can happen on this platform. And, and I think that anyone who's listening, I hope they understand that this is going to go way beyond just longevity. But right now, longevity is definitely the most mature output of these different types of diagnostics. So when we talk about methylation, if we, I think maybe we should explain that to yeah. the listeners a little bit. Um, these are just, it's a carbon with three hydrogens, right? The, the, that's a yeah. methyl group. <laughs> and <laughs> you, you struggle to remember yeah, that didn't you, a little bit. That's a that. methyl group. And brain. there are there are different foods and different compounds that can deliver these methyl groups. Like I, I think about Sam E, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Or yeah. we think about methyl cobalamin mm -hmm. B12, yeah. the, the methylated version of vitamin B12. And so whenever you 
you consume those foods or take those nutrients that's delivering methyl groups, then those methyl groups then can attach to your DNA and turn on, turn off genes. That's what, yeah. and that's kind of what we're measuring, right? Exactly. And in the case of uh, DNA methylation, it's really the off switch. By attaching that little carbon group, you can prevent gene transcription. So really turning off those genes is, is when the more methylation we see, generally the more that is a silencing of that gene activity. And a lot of times people um, think that maybe more methylation is good or more methylation is bad. And that's not the case. It's not as easy as that. It, it really is, uh, um, I would say, site specific. So I always like to use the example of tumor suppressor genes. Um, you probably wouldn't want your tumor suppressor genes to be highly methylated because then you're right. not suppressing as many tumors. Whereas vice versa, oncogenes, genes that might cause cancer, you might not want them to always be turned on, right? Um, and so you might want them to be mm -hmm. more methylated. And so it's really, um, I would say, not so much a location of methylation is good or bad. It's just that these patterns are very intuitive to what's actually happening in our body. And if we can read those patterns, mm. we can get a lot more information about what is effective in improving our health. So, so when somebody does this test, right, again, this is called the True Age Complete Epigenetic Age Profile Finger Stick Test. Uh, <laughs> it is offered by our sponsor, Life Extension. They sponsor our podcast, Live Forever-ish. You can check it out at lifeextension.com slash biological age. So when somebody does this, and it's at home, right? That's what they, the finger yes, stick. Yes, it's a finger stick. Okay. At um, home test. When, so when, you're, when you go home, you do this, you send the results in. So, so Ryan, w w when somebody gets the results back, it, 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 does it tell them, okay, here's your chronological age. Yes. Here's your biological age. So you're chronologically, you're 45. Biologically, you're 35 or you're 55. Does it actually give a number? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it gives you the age of your body, uh, but it gives you some more numbers uh, and even more resolution wow. into that as well, such as things like the age of your immune system. How well is your immune system aging, um, which is obviously important. You know, uh, it's obviously as we get older, our immune systems get a little worse. It's why older individuals get vaccines first, for instance. Um, so we're able to tell you things like the aging process of your immune system. We're able to tell you at this exact moment what your instantaneous rate of aging is. Um, so, you know, how much are you aging uh, every year per biological years per year and then we can even give you things more classical measurements uh that have been biomarkers of aging such as telomere length so so if somebody gets the result and it says you're 45 chronologically mm -hmm. biologically you're 60 i mean <laughs> someone's gonna go oh gosh i'm 60 inside i, I got no hope what am i gonna do <laughs> how do you help that person understand what that means and how it can actually be empowering to know that and wait, and while you're answering that, I do want to add a kind of a question to his question. How how much of a difference have you seen with biological? <laughs> how, bad like, <laughs> how bad can it be? Can it be that bad? I mean, that would be <laughs> that would be like a little. Yeah, yeah I might bring it down a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I hate to say that that we you know we've seen probably a, a twenty year uh, age deltas um, in in the positive, and uh, and so yeah, so so sometimes it can be relatively bad, but I think that even in those people, it should be empowering because again, it brings up this. this this idea that that we are in control, right? We are not just our DNA. We have the ability to to impact that via behaviors, medication, supplements, um, whatever this might be. And and so I would also say we've seen drastic changes. We've actually even set up a, a little bit of a, a website with uh, um, an entrepreneur who made a lot of waves recently, Brian Johnson, in Rejuvenation Olympics. And the, the idea is that um, we're trying to get people to compete to get these as low as possible to really reverse their aging wow, process. Wow, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like and, and we've had we have some very competitive, it. yeah, yeah, we have some very competitive uh, group members here. I think everyone trying to be as healthy as they can, and we certainly see it. But it is reversible, and I think that also motivating because one of the things that that is always probably. Uh, one of the hardest parts about health is knowing where you're going to go. What are the risk factors that you have? You know, do you need to pay attention to this? And I think that because we know how these things relate to disease, we also know how they relate to all these quality of life metrics, everything from mental processing speed, IQ, facial aging, um, grip strength and muscle mass. We, we know that generally the faster that you're aging, the worse you're going to perform on those outcomes as you age. Um, and this is not even in, as we're talking about, you know, really older in life, even in our 
you know, 45 and, and 50, we can see associations to aging rate to all of those quality of life metrics, all those things that make life worth living. And so a lot of people oftentimes say, you know, why would I want to live another 10 years if it's going to be a poor quality of life? And with this testing, we know that those things are not mutually exclusive. If you're improving your aging rate, you're reducing your risk of disease and improving your quality of life throughout that process. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a deeper dive, right? I mean, yeah. are, the, some of those other biomarkers of ages that are of age that we can, like you mentioned grip strength, just because somebody has a weak grip strength, there's so many other things you could look at that could be fine mm -hmm. with that person. Mm -hmm. This is giving a deeper analysis of it all. Right. I mean, that's, I think a good way to, to, to think about that. So um, it now is this, are there other tests out there on the market or is this, is this, is this unique out there? Yeah, so th there are a couple tests on the market um, from a couple different companies, but um, I would say the unique differentiator for us is that all of our algorithms are published, um, and I think that that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, I always liken it to you know you can go to another company um, and, and use their testing, but it's a little bit like going to a fortune teller because you you don't know how their value relates to those health outcomes by having our data published. You know we've developed some of our algorithms with Duke and Columbia, Harvard, Yale, um, and so we know how these relate to health outcomes. So we can tell you if you're aging, you know, one point five years, what that means in terms of your healthcare risk. And I think that that's extremely important. Otherwise, you're sort of just taking people's word for it. Um, the other thing is that we actually get to validate in published trials what actually works to reverse these metrics. And so I think publication, pub making sure that these things are, are tools which are publicly validated is incredibly important. We also, uh, I would say, have some really unique algorithms. Um, ours are much more sophisticated, um, and we get a lot more data than most. Um, and so there's several things about our platform that I think uh, make us relatively advantageous. You're listening to Ryan Smith. He is the founder of True Diagnostic. Um, his test is uh, uh, provided by Life Extension, our sponsor, right? True Age Complete Epigenetic Age Profile Finger Stick Test at lifeextension.com slash biological age. You know, just to kind of wrap it up, Ryan, like what would you like our audience to know? Like what's, what's the take home message here? about yeah. testing biological age. Yeah, so, so I think that uh, if there's one big take home message, it, it is that aging, this progressive loss of function as we get older, is something that is mitigatable. We can actually change this. Mm -hmm. um, and when we change it, we can improve our lives, not just immediately, but also uh, you know, in, in the future and, and extend our lives and extend our health span. I think that that's the big takeaway. But if I wanted to drive home another message, it also is that there are different ways to do this whole process. And, uh, and there are certain things that you might wanna do as you're vetting these types of testing. Um, and one obviously is those publications, but also making sure you know, this is a fastly growing field. The amount of information that we're generating on a daily basis continues to grow. Um, and so stay informed, um, but also uh, you know, treat aging as a primary outcome. Uh, we think aging is a disease um, and one obviously that we can now measure fairly accurately. And so I think it's now time that this enters the vernacular. And, and I think uh, both in the medical space as well as in the uh, consumer health space. So if somebody's listening and they want to learn more about you, Ryan, is there a website we can send them to? Yeah, certainly. Uh, our website at uh, uh, True Diagnostic, T-R-U Diagnostic.com is probably the best place. We have we do a ton of uh, open webinars to anyone who's looking to learn more about this information. Um, and we have a lot of other resources. And so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and, and we're happy to provide more. All right. And also, if you want to check out the test that Life Extension has, True Age Complete Epigenetic Age Profile Finger Stick Test at lifeextension.com slash biological age. It's on discount right now, too, right? It is. Yeah. Yes. This is the lab cell that Life Extension does every year. Uh, Ryan, thanks for coming on. Don't forget, you can go to liveforeverish.com. Uh, you can check out other episodes. When you do that, like, share, comment, uh, and subscribe, right? So you never miss a show. Yeah. We call it the one, one two, two punch, punch. <laughs> <laughs> at lifeextension.com. Um, um, check it out. I'm Dr. Mike. Thanks for listening.